So now let's talk about that measurement of what's actually happening with those amino acids. Actually, only, there's a question I want to ask you even before that. Let's think about the normal, when people think of protein, they think of meat, right? That's going to be a great source of protein. Obviously, there's, mo there's protein in most foods have some protein in them. But um, if, you, if you're eating a, a piece of steak, how many of those 20 amino acids are in there? Are they virtually all in there? If you're looking at animal source proteins, whether it's meat or eggs or milk, uh, basically all of the amino acids that a human would need are in those because they're basically, you know, obviously a chicken's not a mammal, but the others are mammals. And basically we have the same amino acids, the same proteins. So they're, they're all there. Uh, meat is a good example because they're all pretty much in the right balances but every protein has a little different balance of essential amino acids. Um, you know, you can look at dairy proteins and dairy proteins are something we can fractionate because they're all water soluble. So we know a lot about alpha lactalbumin versus lactoferrin and lactoglobulin, et cetera, et cetera. So we know that, you know, a lot of differences about amino acid compositions of individual proteins. And so, Going back to what you just said, then animal protein we typically think of as sort of meat, mammals, right? You know, beef, pig, stuff like that. And then, of course, you've got sort of bird protein, mostly chicken for folks, and then fish protein, and then you have eggs, dairy. We're right. saying basically. So, of the first three, yeah. the first three are exactly the same for a protein. Okay. So, whether it comes from a cow or a pig or a chicken or a fish, muscle protein is still muscle protein. And how do we think objectively about the quality of a protein? This is a topic that uh, you, you've you've talked about extensively, but but and, and there's a there's a there's a way there's a numerical way to talk about that, isn't there? An efficiency of of that protein versus you know tofu versus you know soybean yeah. versus rice, you know that all the way down yeah. to sort of lower and lower protein density foods. Yeah, protein quality is something that I think a lot about, and I'm actually w working with a group now to sort of reinvent how we think about that. But I think you're referring to protein quality in the sense of PDCAS or DIAS or something like that. Basically, we realize that when you look at a protein, there are two, there are two factors. One is what's the composition of the, those nine essential amino acids, and the other is What's its bioavailability? How well do we digest it and absorb it? Um, with animal proteins uh, and most isolated proteins, you know, even uh, soy protein isolates, uh, the digestion absorption is pretty close to 100. It's usually 95% or higher uh, for all animal proteins. For plant proteins, though, it gets into, uh, you, you need to realize that in a plant, the, the protein is there for the purpose of the plant. <laughs> and so a lot of it is attached to fibers, to structures. You know, we have, plants have proteins attached to the leaves and the stems and the roots and the flowers and, and uh, the seeds. And it, you know, when you start to isolate that, uh, if you just eat it in a raw form, uh, it may only be 60, 70% available uh, because we can't digest the fiber. So those are the two factors. We can put those two together and get a protein quality score, and we can uh, determine that a whey protein isolate, because of its essential amino acids, is 20% better than a soy protein isolate, just because of the amino acids. Or we can compare uh, a wheat protein, uh, you know, a, a wheat bran, and we realize that it's only 40% available. You know, so if you look at wheat bran on a cereal box and say it was a wheat flour uh, and it says there's four grams per serving, there's actually less than two that you can actually absorb. And so, you know, that, that's how we look at it. Um, in my opinion, uh, the, some of the problems with those right now is it's hard to compare across foods and it's hard to build a meal that way. We can say that whey is better than soy, and so if you're only eating those two things, that's okay. But what happens when you start putting them together? And so 
we, I am working on a group with a group trying to build a protein quality score that really based on three amino acids, uh, lysine, methionine, and leucine, which in my opinion are the key markers for adult health. Uh, and so we're trying to rescore it differently, but you know, that again, long-winded story about protein quality, but that's how it's measured. No, that's, that's very interesting, Don. So what you're saying is, if I'm understanding you correctly, you could brute force your way through life by looking at every single thing you eat and trying to figure out the dias score for its protein. So, okay, I'm about to have a ribeye. That's going to be about a 96% dias. Uh, I'm going to have my, you know, soybeans over here. That's about an 80% dias. I'm going to have my whey isolate. That's a hundred percent dias. I'm going to have my shredded wheats. That's a 40% dias. That's a tough way to go through life. Because you yeah, can't and, just add and, up. And they're the not truly added. Yeah. yeah, they're not truly additive. You can't really figure that That's out. Right. And the and the average person doesn't even have that data. I mean, if you go into the USDA database with whatever seven thousand foods, uh, there are four thousand that actually have amino acid scores, and of those, there's probably less than three hundred that have dias scores. And so you can't put it together. Uh, there's no way. And so we're trying to develop a system that allows people to get better than that. If you, if you look on a label on a package and you see, again, a wheat cereal that says it has four grams of protein, well, again, that's a nitrogen analysis times 6.25 for all the problems I've said. And then if you look over in another column, it'll say daily values. Yeah, exactly. And there almost no almost no label have daily values for protein because they don't that would require a PDCAS or DIAS score and nobody has them. And so that four grams really would translate into less than two, but nobody's being told that. That's right. And, and by the way, just for folks uh, who are hearing us use the term DIAS, that's digestible indispensable amino acid score, correct? Yeah. Right. Right. Okay, so and I have a big problem. the 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 digestibility is where a lot of people have been focusing, but I have a big problem with the amino acid scores because they're incredibly low. They're way too low, and so we have they're established by the World Health Organization by the FAO, which is really designed to prevent malnutrition in Africa. Where we know from our Institute of Medicine that the essential amino acid scores are much higher than that should be. Uh, you mentioned stable isotopes a little bit ago, or tracers. We know from stable isotope studies that all those FA, FAO amino acid scores are too low. And so that's part of the equation that we're not telling people either. Uh -huh.